right, this is block two from topic three, and it is page 67 in our workbook, so we should all be on page 67. First thing is obviously problem one. And looking at the table and graph, look at it for a second. I'm uh, looking at cups of blue paint and cups of yellow paint. And we know by now what color is that going to make? Green. 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 Okay, so we've worked with so much paint now. I think we know what colors make what colors. So how is... What's happening to this blue number to produce this yellow number? What you got? It's getting multiplied by two. So he says he noticed every time on these blue numbers, it's getting multiplied by two to produce the yellow number. Is that happening every time? Yes, it is. One times two is two. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so we kind of found that trick. What do you got, Tristan? Wouldn't 2 be the scale factor? 2 would be the scale factor. Very good. Um, so I think that answers problem 1A. It says to write a rule. And so our rule would be that we came up with is cups of blue paint is being multiplied by two to get yellow paint. Cups of blue paint is being multiplied by two to get yellow paint. One A. Cups of blue paint is being multiplied by two to get yellow paint. Okay, so we're going to do some work with this problem and see if our prediction was correct about multiplying by 2. So looking at their process, they're seeing that 2 is being added various times. The first one, there was one set of two. Second one, there was two sets of two. The third one, how many sets of twos were there? Three. Three. The fourth one, there was four sets of twos. And so they said instead of having to write all those plus twos, what would be quicker to write? Multiplication, Multiplication times the two. So go ahead and jot down the process. This is 1B in your workbook. Filling in the table. All right, so we use this process to help us develop an algebraic rule. To develop an algebraic rule, we need to define some variables. So a variable is just a letter that represents something. So they pick the letter X. What is it representing? Cups of blue paint. Then they pick the letter Y, and what does Y represent? Cups of yellow paint. Okay, so we defined our variables, and we're going to use the process work there to help us create an algebraic rule. An algebraic rule is just an equation. So the first thing that they notice is that the X keeps changing every time, right? depending on how many cups of blue paint we have. So that's why we're just calling it X. Because if we didn't come up with an algebraic rule, we would have to make a table for all the possible combinations in the world. We would keep going on forever and ever and always. We would have a gazillions of gallons of green paint. Do you want to do a table of a gazillion gallons of green paint? No. So instead, that's why mathematicians said, let's create equations to help us, and we can pinpoint exactly what we would need for all the different combinations. So they defined the X, and it kept changing. So if I wanted, 
If I had uh, 20 cups of blue paint, then X, I would plug in a 20. All right, so then they noticed that the two kept being repeated every time something was being multiplied by two. We noticed that too, didn't we, at the beginning? Okay, maybe not. Oh, yes, Didn't we notice it was being multiplied by two? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Um, so that helps us create the equation. So we're going to move that over to our equation. And we get y equals x times 2. But we like seeing the number in front of the variable. And back in sixth grade, you might have heard the word coefficient. Anybody remember what that means? Coefficient. You got an idea? Tristan, you got an idea? A coefficient is it doesn't is it supposed to say it on the board? No. What's a coefficient? Maybe. What's a coefficient? Very good. A coefficient is the number in front of a variable. So looking at my equation, what is my coefficient? 2x. It's only a number in front of the variable. So I have x. What number sits in front of it? 2. 2. Is y a number? No. no. So would I ever say y? No. No. It's because... Coefficient is a number in front of the variable. So I think that answers 1C. It says, what is the coefficient of the algebraic rule? It is 2. And you need to add this equation somewhere off to the side. Y equals 2X. Right, Y equals 2X somewhere next to your table. And then 1C asked what the coefficient was, and we know the coefficient is 2. So, 1D says, does this algebraic rule make sense to the problem? Well, back at 1A, we asked ourselves, what's happening every time in the problem? What did we say in, back in 1A? What's being multiplied by 2? Cups of blue paint is being multiplied by 2 to get yellow paint. Well, let's look at our algebraic rule right here. What did X stand for? Blue. Blue. And it's being multiplied times two. two to get Y, which what does Y stand for? Yellow. Does that say the same thing that we said in 1A? Yes. Yes, yes it does. So does our equation or algebraic rule make sense to our problem? Yes. yes. So we're going to say yes, because blue is getting multiplied by 2 to get yellow. Yes, because blue is getting multiplied by 2 to get yellow. That is 1D. Yes, because... What did I say? Blue is getting multiplied by 2 to get yellow. Okay, the next visual 
not going to write anything down right now. We're just using it for later. It says a ratio of yellow to blue is 2 to 1. And if I wanted to know the unit rate, there are 2 yellow per 1 blue. There's nowhere we need to write this. We just need to kind of remember this for another problem in a little bit. So the unit rate is two yellow per one blue for this problem. All right, we're just gonna keep that in the back of our head. Here, I'm adding a zero to the chart. And what happens when I have zero cups of blue? You have zero cups of yellow, because what is zero times two? Zero. zero. Well, does that make sense? Can I make green paint without blue? No. no, it requires blue. So if I don't have any blue paint, can I make green paint? No. 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 So question 1E, would it, what would happen if you had zero cups of blue paint? And how many cups of yellow paint would you have? So how many cups of yellow would we have? Zero. You would have zero cups of yellow. And what would happen? You can't make green paint. So that is one E. So zero cups of yellow. And you can't make green paint. Zero cups of yellow and you can't make green paint is one E. So now we have learned four different representations for constant of proportionality. We have seen them in a table. We have seen them in a graph. We have seen them in a verbal description, and then we just learned about algebraic rule, or you can call that an equation. So we learned four different ways to represent all the same thing. Well, looking at these four different ways, I just said they're all representing the same thing, the same constant of proportionality. So look at all four of them and tell me what is the constant of proportionality being represented? Dawson? Two. Two? Do we agree two is the constant of proportionality? Mm -hmm. What is the magic number we look for in a table? The one. The one. So in, in it says a two. Magic two. number we look for in a graph is the? One, and it says two. The equation is easy to see. It's my coefficient. And you would have to read the problem here to see that it's being uh, the number of cups of blue by two being multiplied. So two is my constant of proportionality. And I think problem 1F says how are the representations related? He has a constant of proportionality of what? Two. Two. So one F has a constant of proportionality of two. Okay, let's flip over to problem uh, two. And problem two. Looking, I'm making green paint, but am I making the same shade of green? No. How do I automatically know it's a different shade of green, Bryler? There's a three instead of a two, so that means the what vocabulary word is three? Constant of proportionality of this one is three. Okay, so what I would like you to do is take a minute, you're going to finish the table, you're going to graph it, and then on B, you're going to write the equation or the algebraic rule using your table. So finish the table, graph it, and on B, you're writing the algebraic rule. 
Okay, let's check our answers. They figured out that they had to multiply every time by 3. Did you figure that out? Yes, we did. All right. And we get our various cups of yellow paint. Then they said they're going to call cups of blue paint X. And they know X has to be multiplied by 3 because that's what we did every time. And that was my constant of proportionality. So to write my equation, I would get Y equals 3X. And they don't show us a video of their graph. So hopefully we did our graphs all right. Um, problem 3, we're going to come back to if you have it worked it already. You'll work it probably for homework. It just asks questions about that problem. So I want to jump to problem four. And your problem four says something if you, uh, do you notice anything about the relationship between the graph and the algebraic rule that describes it? Number four, Looking at these two graphs and equations, do they have the same constant or proportionality? No. 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 What is the constant of proportionality of the red line? Two. 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 How did you know that? How did you know that? Because in the, um, in the first point, it says one, two. Very good. He looked for his one. The equation or algebraic rule, and it told you by the coefficient. Very good. What is the constant or proportionality of the blue line, Zoe? Three. Three, and you look, what did you look at first, the graph or the equation when you saw it? I, I looked at the numbers that went one, three, two, six, and then I noticed that was, oh, three, six, nine. Okay, so she noticed from the graph that the constant of proportionality was three. Um, so problem four wants us to write some things that are, to compare the two, are both proportional. Remember, there was two things we have to check for proportional. Is it a straight line and does it go through the origin? Are both proportional? Yes, they are. They're both straight and go through the origin. Well, this point on the red line, 3, 6, what does that 3 stand for? What spot is it in, the X or the Y? The X. What did we say X represents? Cups of blue paint. So what does that tell me when 3 is sitting there? I have three cups of blue paint. So what does the six tell me? Yellow paint. Yellow paint. There's six cups of yellow paint. Okay. Well, looking at the blue line, this three nine. What does that three tell me? There are three cups of blue paint. And then how many cups of yellow? Nine. 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 So those ordered pairs help me figure out how many different cups I need to make that yellow paint. So we need to answer um, this question, problem four. I'm going to go to a blank slide here. Problem four, we need to compare them. Were they both proportional? Did yes. we say that? Yes. So we're going to write both proportional. Um, what else did we say? That tells us they're proportional. Do, um, do they have the same constant of proportionality? No. They have different constant of proportionalities.
<clears throat> All right, so let's go to problem five. I think you have to flip the page, huh? Mm -hmm. In problem five, five A says, how can you identify the constant of proportionality in a graph? So if I was just to look at the graph, what is the quickest way for me to know the constant of proportionality? What do I want to look for? Um, the, um, you're looking for the magic one. So when it's one, what is the other number? My constant of proportionality, looking at the one. So we're going to write for this one. When x equals one, y equals your constant of proportionality for 5a. When x equals 1, y equals your constant of proportionality. B says, how can you identify the constant of proportionality in an algebraic rule? So if I was just looking at my equations, what am I looking at to know my constant of proportionality? Y and x is going to tell me it? What am I looking at? I'm not, it says when I'm looking at the algebraic rule, so if I'm just looking at these two things with no graph, how do I know what my constant of proportionality is, Tristan? Look one up, what's in the front of x. And what do we call that vocabulary word? Constant of proportionality. No, that is my constant of proportion. Sure. My coefficient, coefficient is going to tell me. So the co -e the coefficient will tell me from the equation. C says. How can you identify the constant of proportionality in a table? Well, they didn't give me a table, but if I just had a table, what was that magic thing I looked for? One. The magic number one. So the table is the same thing as the graph. When x is one, what is y? Two. Wait, I'm well, sorry. For that one, y will be my constant of proportionality. What? So when you're talking about a, it's just when x equals 1, and the y equals the constant of proportionality. Right. In the first graph, does that mean 2 is the constant of proportionality? Right, because here's my 1, and the graph is hitting at this 2. Here. Is a one graph is hitting at a three. Oh, no. I forget what. We looked at that already. All right, we are moving right along. That was problem five, correct? Yes, I want to set up six for you, and then you're going to finish it for homework. Look at six's table. Kind of the same, but kind of different. What is the one major difference you notice in this table? Bryler? All right, there's some missing numbers in the table. What is different about the table? This almost looks like the same problem we just did, but something's a little different. Uh, what's a little different? On the x-axis, there's the numbers are bigger than the numbers on the y-axis. OK. 
Okay, the numbers are different sizes. What do you notice? It looks like they're going to have to divide. Okay, uh, what do you got? Uh, the yellow is an X instead of the blue being an X. Oh, these have been swapped. On the last problem, wasn't this first column X blue? Mm -hmm. Now X they're saying is yellow. yellow. Well, let's go back. Remember, there was one part in the lesson I said we're going to look at this later on. And we said it took, there was two yellow per one blue, right? In that problem we looked at before. Now, now we're going backwards. So now it's going to be two blue per one yellow. We flopped it. What's happening to this two to turn to a one? Dividing by two. Dividing, dividing by two. But we don't like dividing. We like to multiply using scale factors. So what should I multiply? What kind of fraction for this one? What fraction would work? Half. A half. So I'm going to multiply that two times a half and it's going to give me one. So what should I multiply one by? Two halves. A half. And what is one times a half? A half or 0.5. So what is the magic number that keeps repeating every time? A half. A half. So what is my constant of proportionality on this problem? A half. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a second. I know you want to keep finishing the problem. You'll finish it in a second. I want you to get two sticky notes and recap the lesson. So we have a constant of proportionality, means the same thing as a unit rate. We know now that it's seen four different ways. We see it in a table, a graph, a verbal description, algebraic rule. And an algebraic rule means an equation. Just anywhere in block two. And the other sticky note is constant of proportionality equation, which is y equals k times x. So we refreshed our memory of what variables and coefficients mean. When you're done copying these down, you can get started on your homework, which is six and seven, and some of us need to finish problem three. Thanks for listening and like. Subscribe and turn on those notifications. Bye. Peace out.